On today's Minute of the Apes, oh shit, y'all, it's Ape Lincoln. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies one minute at a time. I'm Todd. That was Richard off the top with the beautiful ape pun. And Sean sitting silently, which I do believe may be the first time I've ever said that about Sean. I'm, I, we ruined it. <laughs> I talked. So here we are at minute 112. Do we have any housekeeping that needs to happen or can we jump right we're, into we're this so very, very something moment i don't know i was going to call it juicy but at the same time penultimate well i mean n- not including credit 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 <laughs> my, my penultimate credit uh, not including credits I, this actually is our by the way you were searching for domain names i think you need to go search that Look and see if we can get that too and we can link all of the apes back <laughs> to by that the way dirty desktops is available if anybody wants to go <laughs> register dirty desktops i now have to look up credit <laughs> <laughs> I went to the bank this week, and they wouldn't give me a loan. I had bad crediments. And there it is. <laughs> crediments right. is also available. There you go. All right. Who wants to know if there's a typo in crediments? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. That was it. All right. So minute 112, Sean, tell us what's going on. All right. We're going to start minute 112 with more crashing and end with a dedication to Thade. Here we come. Minute 112, Tim Burton, Marky Mark, and Thade on the Credit Minute of the Apes. As a minute 112, we have an Oberon's worth of apes and humans, two displaced pods worth of humans and apes, so many wild humans and apes, city minus two gorillas, and a piece among humans and apes. Visually, we see inside the capsule as Leo braces for impact, smashes into the reflecting pond, some particles fly forward to the lens, then the pod goes tumbling, tumbling, tumbling up the steps of what we know as the Lincoln Memorial. We linger on the outside of the pod for a long time as a shit ton of sparks go off inside and Leo's not burned. Yet then, as it explodes out and shoots the front glass area of the pod away, Leo emerges and it's still sparking inside. He is very bloodied now. Okay, so he's had a crash. I can understand the bloodied now. He starts stammering up the steps. Everything is conveniently backlit so that we see all the smoke. We then go to an over-the-shoulder of what we would think is the Lincoln Mm -hmm. Memorial in the exact same but uh, camera movement as we get in the first film, except that it's going uh, right Right to to left left. instead of left to right. But it is the same thing. And as we see it, we see the Washington Memorial off in the distance. We see this side of what looks like Lincoln. And they did a great job with, at least from the back, making that still look like Lincoln. So it comes across, Leo looks up, and then, ba-dum-bum, bum, and we get the, any percussionist who heard it, that gong, you're warming it up, you, you do this to get it going, and then you slide something metallic across it, so it goes. <laughs> it is the biggest trope in the whole world that you know somebody is just giving you something, <gasps> oh my God, and that's when we see Thade. 
they sitting there now. Let's let's talk before we get, we'll get to the point that the sculpt of that statue beautiful. They did a great job. If you're going to evoke Lincoln and put him within it, there are a lot of great things right there. It does an axial cut where we jump right in on the same axis. She had a tighter shot of his face. It then pans up, and I'm, I'm going to read these words. We get a shot that says, "In this temple, as in the hearts of the apes for whom he saved the planet." Whom he, whom he saved the planet, the memory of General Thade is enshrined forever. So the memory of him is enshrined forever. And that is basically it for this episode. So we can start with the crash landing. Sean, you had something you wanted to say about the landing gear. Uh, oh, you, real, real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the it, it said in the previous minute that there was a malfunction with the landing gear. Mm -hmm. It was on the screen itself. But if you notice, when he crashes at like seven minutes or seven seconds in, the landing gear works just perfectly enough so it'll prop up the front so that it can pop off and you can see one little gear come out <laughs> and say, yeah. and now, boom, landing gear works. And then that front dome, it's so weightless when yeah. it pops off and spins around and falls down. I want a dome that has weight to protect me from the, the rigors of outer space. That just looks like a piece of plastic that popped off. How is off. he even alive? Yeah. How is he alive after that crash? And then within the sparks inside that All capsule. that fire. Yeah. The smoke in there. He should and he's not be singed. suffocating. Yeah. yeah. I, at least get out and be putting out fires on right. your clothes yeah. and shit. It's just like, okay. And also it's a really bad composite of him crashing in the oh, yeah. water and the water. It kind of reminds me of, uh, have you seen the clip of air force one where the, the air force, uh, the actual plane crashes into the water and it looks so horrible. No. Oh my God. Well, we have to remember this is also pre modern special effects. They were probably right on the precipice of being able to go over to so much more computer generated imagery. <laughs> and so you still had those compositing type look, things. Look how bad that is. That that's what the the crash reminded me of. Yeah. That that bad compositing. I mean they have well yeah that, I mean look that that's what it looked like right there. But that's flipping over the airplane. That's mm -hmm. how it looked to me crashing in bad water uh, sim. Uh, I don't know why the crash had to be so dramatic. No. He um, why he had to why it just I, the only thing I can think is they're trying to ruin the ship so they can't use it again for a potential future movie. So he's trapped here on this earth. Lord. <clears throat> uh, you know, again, Leo doesn't know how to fly a ship. This ending wrote them into, this is one of those, this is one of those things where, uh, uh, in Daredevil, when Bendis finished his run, uh -huh. he dropped it off for. And, and you're in prison, and now somebody else I gets to pick somebody up. Somebody's got to figure it out. And yeah. then who who was Ed Brubaker? Yeah, it up after that. And Ed Brubaker did the exact same thing. At the end of his, like, I'm going to drop us here. Yep. And then the writer after that, who was Andy Diggle, had to come in and figure out how to get him out of that. Yeah. This great. This ending is one of those things. Like, here you go. Have fun. <laughs> figure this one out. Well, it, we'll let's let's finish okay, noticing okay. details in a minute, and then I think at the end, let's talk about what this minute does not only for the end of this film, but what they're obviously trying to set up because you're absolutely right. It is very much a, here you go. What are you doing with this now? And especially, so the, the, the moment at about 36 seconds when we get the actual reveal of Thade sitting upon that chair, I didn't know it was what? Thade at first. I was, I'm glad they put the words up there. Yeah, they would I, have I to need do that to, just know, to be... know, yeah, know that it was Thade. You're right. You're right. But well, at let's... the same time, I, I think well, that the sculpture itself is very well done with that oh, yeah, foot is, yeah. forward, the way exactly. it is. Well, let's, let's step back just a second. You crash. Why do you go into the Lincoln Memorial at all to begin with? Why do you True. walk in? Why do you not walk down, sit down, compose yourself? You crash, get out of the pod. Oh, the first thing I'm going to do is go sightseeing? No, you're going to sit down, compose yourself. Right. Why is there nobody at, at in Washington, D.C., at the Lincoln Memorial at all? He crashes, and there is nobody. Is it? There is okay. no crowd there. It's emptiness. What so is going on here? Also, if... I know what's going on here. They're setting up for the next minute, and, and if, but it's bullshit. And if this is that Thade has come along and changed Earth... How did he go in the past? Well, and then also, why is it called Washington, D.C. at yes. that point? he would he, There would have been no Washington. This is so convenient that they're, they're evoking the Washington Memorial. Memorial the Lincoln the, Memorial. And these things that, that he would... He, he would have erected totally his history. own... Yeah, it would... It would 
you're trying so fucking hard for the Statue of Liberty moment that you're saying, oh, he comes and he just changes everything and he puts himself on that chair. But how did so they stupid. go into the past to... He would have to not go into now, like where where Davidson is. He'd have to go into hundreds of years ago, if not thousands of years ago, to But let's also... The, the elephant in the room is... We, Thade, we left Thade and he was locked in that fucking yeah. command capsule. Uh-huh. He somehow... Somehow got into another pod. escape pod and got ahead of Leo, so he went even faster and went back further, further and affected. and got to Earth and changed Earth's entire history and and, and apparently has died and it, because this is in the he, memory of yeah in memory of and he does say planet it does say planet he saved the planet so, now again the last timestamp we had from Leo in the rocket ship is twenty one sixty eight so they just only has to go back two hundred three hundred years uh, yeah, I mean what. The human race can't exist at this particular point. I don't... W- right. He just has to go back before... He just has to go back after Leo takes off. But how? And then he has 168 how? years. I don't know. I'm just he, saying. I'm just saying. No, he has Richard, he has, you're, you're explaining all this. Explain it all. He has a hundred. He has to go back in time bef- with apes. With apes. With apes. And right. arrive somewhere between when Leo leaves in 2000, 2001, and... No, he, Leo left in 2022, right? Who the some, fuck yeah. knows? There's, there's at least about a hundred year period that Thade could have come back and conquered the planet. Yeah, but he's got to... Now, there, okay, we talk about a sequel. It, it could have been interesting to explain how Thade got out, how Thade got there, and how... Did he go to the zoos and somehow, you know, lead... Liberate, or, yeah, and teach he, them how he, to be intelligent. He would and, have to, like, bring the entire planet that he's on now back to earth maybe he learned how to launch the Oberon. No that's way. what i'm saying he learned how to launch the Oberon. Or but i mean that's a possibility he, he plaus, plausibility Plaus- possibility it was so crashed he learned covered he, in sand. but we don't know how i mean the the it, the, only, the only the only thing that i have a problem with is the fact that thade thade's entire species would have to have a technological advance a, yeah. crazy technological advancement in order to Get the Obron going. Get it going. Go back in time. They can't get the Obron going because the uh, if you remember, uh, Davidson used, used all, all the, the fuel, fuel on that one blast. So there's no fuel he had, left. He had jumper cables. There you go. I could give you that. Thade tra- travels back in time and conquers the Earth. I could and and does it in between the 168 years between Leo and and what where he comes across now, and then he remakes the Lincoln Memorial to look like himself because that's what he wants. Because he's now that so, powerful. So he's, he conquers the planet. He comes with apes who are the people we then see, or the apes we then see. Or Anyway, um, I just don't understand how Thade would make such a technological jump. Has I don't either. Make that. That's the only thing I, I haven't read. And apparently, though, they, they completely have the worst poets or whatever to inscribe their, their no, memorials. No, because this is actually what is written on the Lincoln Memorial. Is it really? In this temple, uh-huh. as in the hearts of the people... For whom he saved the Union, the memory of Abraham Lincoln. Somehow that reads better, I think. I don't know why that's but in this temple, as in the hearts of the apes, for whom he saved the planet. I think that's where it jumps, and it's like, this doesn't... The apes whom he saved the planet. Mm-hmm. From what? How did he save the planet? For for it, In this temple, as in the hearts of the apes, for whom he freed. That would have made sense. That could yeah, have okay, told yeah. me something. But he saved the planet. But I look they, at that and I'm like... They're just trying to ape the... Save the well, union. Well, they are, well, but it sh- it's too much. And again, that's where I'm jumping to this now, idea that they conquered the planet. What would have been interesting... Maybe. They is, saved it from humans. That's why yeah. I'm thinking that's why they're there. Liberated a, the planet. As opposed to an evolutionary thing that we're supposed to somehow right. plausibly think that but apes... I see where you're jumping changed at that. Time. Here's what it would have made... Washington. Here, right. But here's what it would have made better in your theory is if you saw a broken off head of Abraham Lincoln on the bottom and you oh, saw I agree with that. and you saw like crossed out and then rechiseled, you know, instead of Union, you saw Planet, instead of Lincoln, you saw Thade. So that you saw maybe they okay, came you in know what, and took you know over what? the planet yes, that, that actually, way. Actually, I like that other than just kind of dropping it here. Maybe it's something they would have explored in the second second film or one they were doing here that that actually happened. But yeah, that would have been a lot more dramatic to see that moment. Instead, we're left with this un. Our minds are having to tumble through why right. how do you, the Lincoln how do you, Memorial changed. That's the problem. To so here's the simplicity of the first film: is it's Earth and the future. Yeah, and, that's and, it. and we. But even the things that we see and we get are very quickly. You go, oh 
shit. You can imagine what happened. Right. You see the decim- decimated vision of the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. It is now somehow landlocked. It is not, a, a, it's not an in, island in yeah. the middle of the water. It's on a beach. It, yeah. the, you have completely changed the topography of everything about this planet, and here it is. And when he says you did it, that's also you're, you're living in the time when people were paranoid about of mm-hmm. those kind of destruction. Right. Of, the, of these kind of things with the atomic race and all this. That makes sense. This has... There's almost no sensical way you can explain what has happened because, again, we the last time we left Thade, he's locked in a capsule. And we've established they were not on Earth at all. Right. And so how did they get from that capsule to this place in enough time to completely eradicate and change the history of, yet somehow keep us eerily similar to that of mankind? It is just a fucking mess. I will say, see the picture of Lincoln there? Yeah. Picture of Lincoln there? Uh-huh. I do like how... They kept it very similar, oh, I do too. That's, especially the barefoot on that's, Thade. And that's—I like said that before too. I was Thade, like, yeah. I think that it's a great, it's a great visual evocation of yeah. of that statue that you look at it, and it's it's very spot on, but it's too spot on. If when was the memorial erected? Hang on, it's a really it's a really interesting idea. It is, but it's not thought through. But it's not thought through. It's the we're going for the shock value. That's just going to go. The ground, the, uh, right? Yeah. The groundbreaking was February twelfth, nineteen fourteen. Fourteen. So he had to come back prior to nineteen fourteen. So that at least okay. That's great. That's a hundred years. But but I'm saying least. I'm saying Leo had to take off in two thousand. So either he changed, went back, and Leo's now an anomaly from nineteen fourteen. I got you. Yeah. Or he came back after Leo had left, taken off and changed time, change reality. Just, and it, it, it's, there are too many it questions. There's no answer to it because they they didn't make an answer. They just wanted to say, "Here's our twist." Now, this is something I looked up, and and we may talk about it a little more in the uh, the credit minutes. But I tried to find critical consensus, audience consensus, and a lot of the things that kept coming back was the twist was a twist for twist's sake, and. Um, Tim Burton said, look, it's a time travel movie. It is supposed to, you're not supposed to entirely understand it. My problem with that is, is that probably, I, I, and please disagree with me if you can think of something, but potentially one of the best time travel films or series of films is the Back to Future yep. films, though they have plot holes and yep. you can point at Definitely them. Definitely part two. Yeah. But, it, but it does explain itself and you understand because it is about time travel from the very beginning. This film is not ti- about time travel no. at the very beginning. It is about, about exploration, yeah. saving an ape, going to a planet where it's all intelligent apes. And then suddenly it becomes this wonky time travel shit. That well, That's why it doesn't work. You've not explained to me how and why this is happening. We I, never explained. I told you in the script, it talked about the cloud that was causing blackouts on Earth. Mm-hmm. We never explained any of that. They up. dropped it completely. Right. And again, had they prefaced it with something like... Like some anomalous force, right? You know that was a mystery a thing that point. was affecting Earth, could help us explain some of this right. here. I know I've told this story before, but uh, before this came out, Kevin Smith had written a comic book, a Clerks comic book that took place between Clerks and and uh, Dogma, I think, and then Dogma. Uh, one of the, I can't remember which one of the movies, but they end up with an orangutan and they're running around with an orangutan. And this is like how they met it. And in part of the movie, they do a Planet of the Apes riff. I mean, part of the comic book, they do a Planet of the Apes riff, and they go <clears throat> to the Lincoln Memorial, and it's a ape there instead, right. and all this stuff. And then this movie comes out, and they have the Lincoln Memorial and ape there. And uh, Kevin Smith said, you know, it's I, I can't believe that. Uh, Tim Burton did this, and it's like he's ripping off my comic. And then somebody went over to Tim Burton and said, I, Kevin Smith said, you're like, you're ripping off his comic, putting this ending in there. He goes, well, you know, I, I didn't read Kevin Smith's comics. I don't read comics. And then Kevin Smith replied that, I know you don't read comics. I saw Batman. Oh, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> um, I it, mean, let's take it, you know, we're kind of left trying to explain why Ape Lincoln exists, specifically Thade, how Thade would do this, how the planet would transform. We're, we're not in an era where 
uh, the movie audiences can understand multiple dimensions. We're not at that point now where we can, you know, right. the Th- MCU has is, kind of allowed us to do that now. And this but is that's the birth of the, This is the birth of the internet when this comes out. So it's not like you're going to IMDb or, or a forum and discussing this with other people. It's just, uh, just I just remember seeing it in the theater. And at the end of it, it initially I was excited. I thought, okay, that's cool. But I remember, I can remember almost the moment of walking out into that that uh, that that area just beyond the concession stand. You're talking to your friends, and my mind starts going, "What? How? How? You have to be as the filmmaker, the person that's asking that question. You have to look at this and go, but how? And if you've not done something, all they have to do is, to your point, that cloud." Could have been we sent Chinese weather balloons into it, and they they vanish and they show up a year later and showing no signs of deterioration, or, or you something th- like that that says that nebula is a time travel portal. And we see we see that we see the Bermuda Triangle of the nebula as he travels right. through. We see something usual, you but know? make that your mystery yeah. at the first of the film. We make a, it. We see a cow flying in space, and there's a witch flying. <laughs> the broom there you go. And, nah, 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 nah. But uh, the I, so I think you know he's uh, Burton's probably trying to go for. How do I put an ape image on something known to the yeah. public? Like what other I just find it so funny that the, the one thing that they I, glean on where they're trying one hundred percent to ape on the original is to have this twist that somehow the apes and the earth I'm have surprised he didn't twisted. have him crash in New York City and then just over his shoulder you see the Statue of Liberty and it's got an ape face instead. And that would have I would have actually might, done be, like that better. They might have thought that was too close. I mean but he crash lands in Europe and it's a Sphinx with an ape face. <laughs> yeah. Man, let's 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 I wish we had the budget to actually create all these alternate endings yeah. and punk but I'm trying to imagine what what uh, if he lands in Greece in the museum and it's the statue of David with an ape face. And I mean, he finds the Mona Lisa and it's an ape face. It's on an it. ape face. It's, yeah. it's Ari. <laughs> I mean, that, that's basically what he's trying to figure out. He's trying to figure out how can I take the Statue of Liberty, right. iconic imagery, what is a big national monument that we have, and then how do I personify that? And this makes the most sense. It's where, okay, Sean may be able to find a plot hole in these new films, but at least the new films said let's let's be very respectful of these films but let's forge our own path and there will be moments and i think potentially in the first one's a little more ham-fisted when it comes to some of the here nods to the original films yeah okay. and they get yeah. away from that a little yeah. bit as it goes on yeah yeah but it's never this i will at least assure you and i will not spoil a single fucking thing for you about these richard because richard is the one who's not seen any of them it is never this there's even though you may go oh there it is you will never have the ape Lincoln moment. I, I guarantee you that. Yeah. And yeah. and I think that's where this one goes really astray is they were they're but trying both so hard to avoid retelling that story, yet also trying so hard to, to somehow evoke the feelings and the mm-hmm. thoughts that we have from it. Mm-hmm. And you can't do it. You can't you can't mix this without setting it up. And it's just this and Ape Lincoln is the perfect name for it. It is it is the worst moment of this film in my opinion. Well, and it's it's not even it's not even that we're at the statue of uh, the sorry the Lincoln Memorial and it's an ape face. It's the fact that it's also specifically fade, fade, and mm-hmm. they, yeah. we, we've our our, our, villa, our villain lives. That just, yeah, you know, yeah. <sighs> we needed that moment. You know, the cliffhanger is the villain still alive. And or you know, if they put like Cornelius or Caesar or somebody else's name on there, it'd have been. Something that would have been fascinating. Yeah. I would have loved it. Because then you go, wait, who is this? Ape? They were going so hard to avoid a name from the original films yeah. to throw an original name film in here would be fantastic. Let's go back to your idea with the MCU giving us multiple dimensions and whatnot. Right. I would have rather that Leo took that pod, blasted off from the planet, and there's the Oberon. Oh my God, it's safe. And he lands on Oberon and Thade's running the fucking Oberon. That I could have almost bought. And that, because and then somehow he got the Oberon off and, you know. And, and that's what I mean. He, he safely lands on the space station that's hovering over some, but it's not the Oberon, it's a different place. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden he gets and he realizes that the, the nurses that are taking care of him are all apes. Yeah. That'd be freaky. I mean, that, that, but that seems more plausible. But again, you're trying to evoke, trying to avoid the original film as much as possible. <laughs> While putting something iconic, we are concluding. running from the original film, uh-huh. yet we're trying to make the original film yeah. while We're running making from a reference. It. Yeah. Well, our concluding reference, not just a reference, our concluding reference. Yes, I, I think that we've all dreaded this moment, and I think when you get to it, and especially if you're going to look critically at it, it is so. It, it, it left field doesn't even 
constitute where this comes from. I don't know where the fuck it comes from. I think I remember walking out of the theater, and I remember said I I didn't think it was that bad when I watched it originally. I think I remember walking there, go, huh, okay. Yeah, I think I was going with it because <laughs> yeah. I thought so too. All right. Cool, I, that's so, interesting. So and I'm then not, I just dropped it like I, it was popcorn film. I just let it go. I yeah. didn't actually like digest what actually happened. I'm trying, the, to remember, I'm trying to remember if I had a conversation with friends about what <laughs> happened because it's been a while. So you can have popcorn films. Star Wars is a popcorn film, the original uh, New Hope. Mm -hmm. But it still had something to say. You know, trust in yourself and not in technology. What the fuck is this film about? Mm. I mean, if we're if we're referencing, was it guns? We're talking about guns. We're talking about religion. We're talking. We're ta talking about politics. We're talking about slavery. I mean, that maybe that's the callback here. Maybe, but I just don't think that you know uh, the, the slavery. Okay, if you're going to put Abe Lincoln here, it would have been interesting to really push the idea of slavery more yeah. within the planet. So then sure. these two would tie together. Right. They don't. But they don't. They didn't no. do enough with that. It. In fact, again, all the humans are very clean. Treated, you know, as house servants more they than got nice slaves. They clothes and everything. They can speak. They can talk. And they we, can have we families. Can see, and we, yeah. when we last left, when we left the planet. They're they were, all getting along all getting together. Along. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, the first movie had a message. It had a, a you know, Rod Serling writing a script right. for it. So and it, you can't go wrong with and that. Not saying they weren't trying to make money. Obviously, they were trying to make money. Right. That's what you do with a movie. But this one just felt like they were going, hey, we have a title. And we can get money off that. And we can get good makeup, modern day makeup. Yeah. Has anybody Googled to see what some of the other previously attached people wanted to do? I, I've been ending? trying to get AI to do Mona Lisa as an ape, and that's the closest I can get. Is <laughs> There's Ape Lisa. Poor, poor Mona Lisa doesn't look that far from the apish look. As uh -huh. when... So I think that that pretty much gets us to the end of that. We've got one more minute of action, if I'm correct, correct? Yep, Before this, we... this is our last minute of action. Yeah. So let's Wednesday. do this. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Let's come in and, and go at tomorrow and see what we can figure out and see if it makes itself any more clear. All right. All right. So for Richard and Sean, I am Todd. We are leaving Ape Lincoln in the past. And everyone, have a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody. Come in and